Hey everybody, hope you're having an awesome day. Before we get started with today's video, I want to say thank you. We're at 20,500 subscribers. We're on our way to 30,000. Thank you guys so much for the support and for subscribing to the channel. I also want to remind you that you can become a member to the channel today for just 99 cents a month. The MVP, VIP, and Pro versions, I'm weeding those out. I still got a couple members that are on those. Once I get them done, I will pull them completely. And then all the perks from the MVP, VIP, and Pro will drop down to the eBuzz Central member for just 99 cents a month. Great way to support the channel and a great way to support the content you like. While I'm saying that, I want to say thank you to my newest members, Leon Brewington and a girl from Saturn. Thank you guys so much for becoming members to the channel. You don't know what that means to me. Thank you so much for the support. And all you other members, thank you. This channel is going to grow in 2023, and I'm really excited to see what I'm going to be able to do for y'all. And if you haven't had the chance to watch my previous videos, the last four I put out have a lot of great info in them. Uh, Nabara Project just come out with their newest version of their operating system. Great, great base of Fedora and makes content creation and gaming easy. Manjaro KDE, the newest release of it. Vanilla OS and Nitrix OS. So if you haven't checked those out, please zip on over and check those out after you watch this video. Today, we're going to revisit a couple of distros that I think are going to be under-the-radar distros for 2023. What I mean by under-the-radar is they're not going to get a lot of coverage, but I think they're really solid distros, and they're really easy-to-use distros. One is based on Debian, and one has a pure OS base with a Linux Libre kernel. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and cover the first OS, which is... Watt OS. Now, this is a distro that actually used to be based on Ubuntu, but now they have completely flipped over and it's com completely based on Debian. And they just come out the other day. A new Watt OS has been released for immediate download. It's simple, minimal, and fast. It brings your old computers back to life with Watt OS Desktop Linux. And then it says down here, tools you need without bloat. You get to decide what you want without the clutter and overhead. Now, it is a lot lighter, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and read the release notes. It's based on Debian 11 Bullseye, the stable release, LXDE Desktop 11, kernel 5.10. It comes with Flatpak support out of the box. It's got the Debian backports added to app, so you can add newer packages and firmware if that's what you want to do. Contrib and non-free added to app to ease installation of other items if needed. Calamares is what they're using as the installer. It's got the inclusion of GDEBI ease install of .deb packages. You guys know what those are if you download them online. And we'll go through it a little bit on the desktop. And then they've got their Discord information and their social links. And then you can download the ISO. And then download will be available on November 17th. So I've downloaded it. What I'm going to do is fire it up in GNOME boxes real quick. So let's zip on over to the desktop. And as it's loading, we will definitely have to go over to the display and get the resolution correct. But like I said earlier, I actually worked around in Watt OS in probably 2018. I liked it, but it wasn't one of those operating systems that just, you know, used Ubuntu and stepped forward kind of like a Linux Mint. But I've played around with it a little bit on this Debian base, and it's really a nice OS. If you're putting it on older hardware, or maybe you want to put it on newer hardware and just make that hardware fly, this is definitely an option. Now, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and fix our display. So let's come down here, go to Preferences, and go to Monitor Settings. And what we will want to do right here is go 1920 by 1080. And let's apply that. Click OK. And we shall close. And let's go ahead and make that full screen. There we go. So out of the box, you get a nice lightweight LXDE desktop environment. If you just right-click on the panel, you can create a new folder select all invert selection, sort files, uh, desktop preferences. If you click on desktop preferences, it lets you change the appearance, stretch and crop to fill the monitor area. And then I think you're probably just going to have one or two wallpapers. Yeah. Let's go ahead and bring that one up. Let's open that one. I think I actually like the other one a little better, but you can come in and set your wallpaper up to whatever you want or link it to a file that's got all of your wallpapers in it. And then, of course, you can adjust your desktop icons if you want documents on the desktop, or you can take those off and take the trash can off. And then advanced. Show menus, use desktop as a folder, things like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and install Watt OS. This should be the Calamari's installer. And it's pretty simple. Those of you who've seen me cover different 
distributions in the past. It's got a welcome screen. You go ahead and click next. You can set your location. Click next. Set your keyboard. Adjust your partitions. You can just go ahead and do that. And then, of course, come in here and put your username in. And then your password. And then it'll give you a summary right here. And then when you click on install, it'll ask you, are you sure? But we're going to cancel that. So that's pretty easy. So that's the Calamaris installer, and that's how easy it is to install Watt OS. Now, if you come down to the bottom here, you got a little arrow. Let's click on it. And this brings up your shutdown, reboot, suspend, switch user, lock screen, log out, or cancel. Let's go ahead and cancel out. And then you've got time right here, wired connection for internet, and then, of course, You've got your sound and audio right here. It comes out of the box on mute. So make sure you double check that. If you install it and you're like, I don't have audio, it's automatically muted out of the box. Then you've got two desktops over here. And then there's the terminal. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal and see what we're running. Now, if you can't see that, let me maximize it a little bit for you. Out of the box with terminal open, we're using about 397 megabytes of the two gigabytes I have issued to it. Now, that is light. That is really light. And that's one of the things I like about LXDE is that it's pretty functional, but at the same time, it runs really light. Uh, I still have a lot of people out there that say they like XFCE over it because it's a little bit more customizable, and I have to agree with that. But if you're not really into tune with that fully customizable or changing anything, just wanting something that's lightweight and you can use it, this is definitely a, an operating system to take a look at. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you come back down, you've got Firefox. And then let's go ahead and open up your file manager. And this right here looks to be PC Man. Let's go ahead and double check it. And it is PC Man FM 1.3.2. It's lightweight. Uh, you got your usual suspects over here, home folders over here. And it pretty much stays out of your way and lets you do what needs to be done. Now, it is a little less feature rich than, let's say, like a dolphin. But if you're not somebody that does a lot or gets really in depth of what you're doing inside your file manager pc man will work great for you so let's go ahead and close out of that now let's come down here to the app launcher up here you've got accessories it comes with screenshot vim x archiver graphics document viewer g thumb internet firefox and transmission for your torrents office just comes with document viewer pulse audio controls vlc media player system tools there's your gw package manager if you're not familiar with it basically what it is is if you go online and you find a debian package that you can download once you download it you go into downloads right click on it say open it with open it with gw and it will install it for you gparted htop lx terminal task manager and then preferences you got advanced network configuration customized look and feel light dm gtk Monitor settings, power saver, synaptic package manager. And this right here is a great package manager, a great way to install applications on your system. If you don't want to use GW by itself, pretty much it's a type search install type package manager. You just come up here and you could type in something like Caden Live and go do a search on it. It would bring Caden Live up right here. You could just click on it to install. Market for installation, these right here would be all your dependencies. Go ahead and mark all of those. And right there, it'd be ready to install. All you would have to do is click apply or come over, search for a lot more applications that you want to install. Just mark them all at the same time and then install them all at the same time. So Synaptic is a great tool. I love it. It's probably one of my favorite package managers. Let's go ahead and quit. And then back down to the bottom, I think you have log out and run and that's it. Guys, that's just a quick look at Watt OS. Uh, Rook, Linux, I'll do my best. Generally, I mess things up, especially with pronunciation, so I'll give it my best shot. But Rook Linux, I'll be sure to link this website in the description below. But it's a fully free, simple, lightweight GNU Linux operating system for home users and small enterprise and educational centers with 100% privacy. And then you come down here, it uses the Linux Libre kernel. It comes ready for home or office use. And programs are easy to find to install. And it's basically right now based on the Pure OS Core. And then they give you a little audio file to let you know how it's pronounced. And then down here it says, why using your Rook? 
It's 100% free, which is pretty much general across the board with all Linux distributions. Full control. Uh, it offers simple, user-friendly graphic interface. Uh, simple. It ships with the most common software for popular computing tasks. You can install RPM packages on this. You just go into the terminal, you type U-RPMI, and then the name of the package, and it will install from there. Now, it does come with Synaptic as well, so there's many different ways to install software on here. And you can install software from source. Just type in the terminal U-SRC, followed by the file you want to build, so you can install from source there. And over here, they have the Package Manager Simulator. You can simulate popular package manager commands right there in the system. So you can pretty much get applications from anywhere you want to. Aruk Docker, we have a Docker image for Aruk GNU Linux. You can use it by installing the Docker and then typing this right here and then get involved. You can share it with your friends, reporting issues, suggesting improvements, helping in forums, writing and translating documentation and or applications, designing, develop software for Aruk. So let's go back to the top. We've got home, about, features, Docker, get involved, contact, download, blog, and bug reports. If you click on download, it just brings you down here, and it comes in the Mate edition. So what I'm going to do right now, without any further ado, is go ahead and let's get over to the desktop. And if you download a Rook, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. Now, I do want to let you know I tried to open it in GNOME boxes, and it would boot it seemed like it took a little longer to boot than it does in VirtualBox. And when I tried to get the resolution correct, it would sit to the screen just fine, but the little Mate dock would stay up here in the center of the screen. So I tried it in VirtualBox, it booted right up. So I'll, I'll fight with it in GNOME boxes later. But I did want to let you know if you want to run it, it's probably going to have a better performance inside of VirtualBox. And as you can see, this is the Mate desktop. You got the single panel up top up here. And then, of course, you got the little dock down here. You've got date and time, battery power, internet connection, sound, Bluetooth, and then virtual desktops, and then your application menu right there. And then you come back down to the bottom, you got the Cyanara player, which is an audio player for the system. And when that pops up, you can pretty much point it to whatever directory your music is in and use it. I like the look of the player, but that's definitely something to take a look at if you decide to give Oruk a shot. Let's go ahead and close that. And then right here, you can install it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the installer real quick. And when that pops up, it just says, Welcome to Aruk Linux 3.0. This program will ask you some questions. And it's going to give you a lot of the same things you get with a lot of other installers. Yes, United States. It'll ask me where I want to be. I can go up here. You can change that around if you wanted to. Set your keyboard. Name, computer name, pick user, choose password. And then, of course, click Next and you'd be able to install it. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of that. Yes, I wanna quit. And you have LibreOffice. Then we have Mate Terminal. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's go ahead and see if they have HTOP. And they don't, let's go with top. Let's maximize that. Make it a little bigger to see. And right now, out of the three gigs I have issued to this machine, it's using about 664 megs to be open at rest, which isn't too bad. It's about 200 lighter than a KDE or a GNOME, so. That's definitely, if you're looking for something probably in between an XFCE and an LXQT and a GNOME or a KDE, Mate falls right in that pocket right there. So if that's something you're looking for, that's something for you to take a note of. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got Thunderbird for your mail. Let's go ahead and open up the file manager, which is Kaja. And Kaja is pretty nice. Uh, it's not as light as, say, like a Thunar, but not as feature rich as a Dolphin. You've got your usual suspects over here, and you got your home folders right here. It pretty much just lets you get your work done, stays out of your way, but then gives you a few more functions than its lighter counterparts. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then, of course, you've got Firefox as your web browser. Now, if we come up top here, let's go to the menu. First thing I want to cover before we look at any applications is the control center. Let's go ahead and open that up, and let's maximize it. Right here is pretty much your main settings panel where you're going to control everything on your system. you got your greeter settings, print settings, synaptic package manager. This is what I was telling you. There's a lot of different ways to install software on this operating system. Now, if we close here, synaptic, I'm not going to go crazy in-depth with it because you guys have seen me cover it in videos. 
But if you've never seen me cover it, it's a type search install program. You would just come up here and let's say you wanted to do a search. You could put in something like Caden Live, let it go out there and search for it. When it brings it up, you just want to click on that box, mark for installation. Here are all the dependencies that are required for it. You would mark those as well. Once it's marked, you just come up here, click apply, and you've installed the application. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Quit. You've got Bluetooth manager, displays, power management, firewall config, appearance, main menu, Mate tweaks, screensaver, Uruk welcome. Let's go ahead and open that up because that did not pop up on boot. So you got a welcome screen here. It's 3.0. It lets you know what edition you're running, and you're running kernel 5.15.79-GNU. So this is a Linux Libre kernel. You've got your hardware right here, apps, forums, getting involved, bug report, control center we were just looking at, update system, and FSF and GNU. So that's a nice little welcome screen. It does say show this dialog at startup. Maybe I just didn't wait long enough for it to pop up. So we'll close out of that. Onboard settings, preferred, screensaver, startup apps, and Windows. And then if you go down through here, it just breaks these down. Hardware, there's your hardware, internet, look and feel, change theme. Now, if you change theme, it should open up a whole separate window. There it is. Let's close out of that and then set preferred applications. So let's go ahead and just close out of this. And then when you go back up to the app menu, you've got all. Let's just go through all. You've got advanced network, appearance, caffeine. Caffeine's pretty nice to have, especially if you're utilizing your laptop and you got to get work done and you don't want it to go to sleep. Decomp editor, Kaja we've already looked at. Then you've got the GW package manager, another way to install software on this system. Genie, GIMP, Image Magic, install Uruk, LibreOffice Suite, Mate Menu, Mate Fonts. Password and keys, personal file sharing, Pluma, Plank, Power Management, Sayonara, Startup App, Synaptic, Take Screenshot, Uruk, Update Manager, USB, VLC, Window Management, and then of course Lock, Power Off, Power On. Let's do a right click. Let's see if we can change this desktop background, see what kind of choices we might have. Those pop up, so I guess we could just go in here and pick us out one like that and it would pop up on the screen. That's pretty nice. What if we went something with a little bit more color? Or something like that. I like that. We'll leave that up there. So that's just a quick look at Rook Linux. It seems pretty nice, guys. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month, but that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month, or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.